You are going to watch an animation about phylogenetics. In this animation, we will define phylogenetics and the goal of phylogenetics. We will discuss cladograms and the parts of a typical cladogram. And lastly, we will discuss the concept of clades or monophyletic groups. This animation will end with the self-test section, composed of six questions based on information presented in the animation. Keep in mind that you can pause and rewind this animation at any time. We will begin our discussion of phylogenetics with the basic question, what is phylogenetics? Phylogenetics describes the tree of life. It is the study of evolutionary relationships among groups of organisms. A phylogeny is a hypothesis about evolutionary relationships among organisms. So, what is the goal of phylogenetics? The phylogenetic approach reconstructs the historical pattern of evolution by tracing descent relationships. The goal of phylogenetics is to construct phylogenies that are true representations of the evolutionary history of a group of organisms. So now, let's discuss cladograms. A cladogram, also known as a phylogenetic tree, is a diagrammatic representation of a hypothesis about evolutionary relationships among a group of organisms. Since a cladogram often has several branches and has a tree-like shape, it is also known as a phylogenetic tree. So now, let's discuss the parts of a typical cladogram. On a cladogram, a node, which is here, represents an ancestor that has speciated to produce two daughter taxa. Graphically, it is represented as a point from which two branches arise. So, on the diagram, two branches originate from each node, meaning that two daughter species originate from each ancestral species. Let's discuss this concept with a real-life example. Let's say that this mouse represents an ancestral species and is put in two different environments, one that is very cold and one that is very hot. Over time, the ancestral mouse that is placed in a colder environment could develop thicker fur to keep warm. So, it differentiates into a new species. And the ancestral mouse that is placed in a warmer environment could develop bigger ears to help it stay cool, creating a second new species. So we see that over time, the ancestral mouse species gives rise to two new daughter species of mouse, both which are distinct from each other and from the ancestor. A cladogram can be used to represent this evolutionary event in which the ancestral mouse can be placed at the node and the two daughter species of mice can be placed at the tips of the cladogram. In the situation in which two different daughter species arise from an ancestral species, this situation is what we call speciation. On a cladogram, the vertical axis represents the concept of time with the lowest node representing the past and the tops of the tree representing the present. Note that the lengths of the branches on a cladogram do not hold any significance. Anything that is placed on the tips of a phylogenetic tree is called a taxon if it is singular or taxa if we are referring to something that is plural. So, Back to discussing cladograms. The basal node, which is here, is the lowest node on any phylogenetic tree. Keep in mind that trees can be nested within trees. So, if we were looking at the phylogenetic tree on the top right hand corner, the basal node would be here, since it is the lowest node on this phylogenetic tree. However, 
if we were considering the entire cladogram as a phylogenetic tree, then the basal node would be here, since it is the lowest node on this phylogenetic tree. So, let's look at a real-life example to illustrate the concept of the basal node. In this cladogram, we see five different branches, fish, amphibians, mammals, reptiles, and birds. We will also introduce a new concept now, that of the outgroup. Let's discuss what an outgroup is first, and then we will come back to this example. So, what is the outgroup? The outgroup is a closely related taxon that is known to have diverged from the taxa under study before they diverged from each other. You can think of the outgroup as a sort of reference point that we use to compare the taxa that we are studying. So if we're looking at this cladogram in which the taxa under study are gorillas, humans, and chimpanzees, gorillas would be the outgroup because gorillas diverged from the other two taxa before they diverged from each other. The outgroup roots the tree and also identifies the basal node. Remember that the choice of the outgroup depends on the level that we are studying. Therefore, the outgroup must be closely related enough to the other taxa under study to be comparable to them. Let's further elaborate on the previous cladogram that we were discussing before. Can you identify the outgroup here? If you said fish, you were right. In this cladogram, fish would be the outgroup because fish was the first taxa to diverge from all the other taxa before they diverged from each other. Then, based on fish as the outgroup, we can then identify the basal node, which again is the lowest node on the phylogenetic tree. Let's further elaborate on the previous cladogram and look at mammals in particular. So if we zoom into mammals, we will see that mammals actually have three different branches, which are monotremes, marsupials, and placental mammals. In this cladogram, the outgroup again would be monotremes because it diverged from the other two taxa before they diverged from each other. So in summary, an outgroup is a taxon closely related to the taxa under study, but that which branched off from the organisms before these diverged from each other. The choice of the outgroup depends on the resolution of the tree. In other words, the outgroup depends on the amount of detail you want to look at and the organisms that you want to include in your tree. A different outgroup can be chosen for each cladogram depending on the taxa that are being studied and compared. This concept will be further elaborated on in later lectures. So, now that we know what an outgroup is, let's go back to discussing the parts of a typical cladogram. We now know what a basal node is, but what about a branch? On a cladogram, a branch, which is here, represents the result of a speciation event at a node. After speciation, as we saw in the mouse example, the evolutionary histories of the resulting two branches are separate. So, this brings us to the question, what is a clade or monophyletic group? A clade, which is also known as a monophyletic group, is a group of organisms that is composed of an ancestor and all of its descendants. So, Let's consider the following cladogram, with the following daughter species of butterflies that we will arbitrarily label as A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So now, if we cut off the tips containing the butterflies D, E, F, and G, We will notice that the butterflies in the group D, E, F, and G represent a clade or monophyletic group. 